It is what it is. Welcome to another episode of Girls Talk Money. I am Money T, and that is simply C. Yes, I gotta get used to this Girls Talk Money. Like I know we kind of rebranded. If you guys didn't notice, right? So let's talk money. Girls talk money. It's all about money. It's all about money. So today we are going to be talking about student loans, the American dream, all these things, and And, then mm -hmm, and how student loans are killing the American dream, right? Yes. So many people in debt. In behind trying to get a greater education, and that is just so crazy. So today we brought in with us, brother, smart money bro, Eric Bowie. Yes. Yes, Eric (laughs) Bowie. I just knew I was going to mess that up. (laughs) Eric Bowie. So Eric has 22 years of investing, owning, and managing single family houses. He's an executive board member for the Habitat for Humanity for five years. He began his professional career as a middle school teacher. Oh, my gosh. That's and cool. a middle and high school basketball coach for seven years. He worked for the federal government 20 years. A voiceover artist. Just a whole lot of fancy things going on <laughs> around here. So let's just bring him in. Yes. Eric, welcome to Girls Talk Money. Hey, how are you all doing today? Wonderful. We appreciate you coming in. Glad to have you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. Very, very important conversation about student loan debt, debt, American dream killer. (laughs) It's American dream killer. All of the things, right? Yeah. (laughs) So I I, I looked up, like, well, I Google, you know, because Google knows everything, like, what's the American dream? And so the response that it said was the ideal by which equality of opportunity is available to any American, allowing the highest aspirations and goals to be achieved. So that that sounds wonderful. (laughs) And we all want it. We all want our goals to be achieved, those that have them. And we all should. and we all should, <laughs> right? Yes, but this student loan debt, I must admit, I came a little obsessed with student loan debt just after listening to Anthony O'Neill. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he was a Dave Ramsey personality at the time, but he he was really focused on student loan debt, and I just became a little bit obsessed with it. So I had put a question out in a group. Eric responded, so I. I wanted him to come and just share his story um, on student loan debt. So I'm going to shut up so you can say a word. (laughs) Because she can talk. (laughs) No. (laughs) But she can. Yeah. So (laughs) just share with us just your thoughts and a little bit of your experience with student loan debt. And just even if you just wanted to go back on some of your intro and personal information and share a little more about yourself. Um, all right. Well, I've been dealing with this money thing for a long time. I grew up really, really poor. And when I say really, really poor, I mean, I lived in, you know, a bunch of apartments and houses. And so I didn't really learn how to handle money, right? The way I should, should have learned how to handle money. And so, um, I didn't have, I was pretty much poor until I was about 30 years old. Okay. I didn't have anything, um, uh, like I always tell people on, on in, in my groups that I, I had a negative $30,000 net worth to my name when I was a grown man. You know, I was 30 years old, had a college degree, was a teacher, like you said, but um, still didn't really understand money. And so um, I started I started changing things around when I was about 30 years old. Right. I, I bought a rental house, all this kind of stuff. So I really changed my situation. And that was about the time when I started thinking about my kids going to college, right? So that was about the time when I said, okay, what do I have to do to make sure that um, I can either pay for their college or I can somehow get their college paid for, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, because I was was dealing with student loan debt myself, right? When I first got married in in 2000, I brought $25,000 of student loan to the table and my my wife brought $25,000 of student loan to the table. So we started off, in 2000 $50,000 a student loan in debt in debt now let me now let me let me preface all this by saying that 
12 years later, without having accrued any more student loan debt, we owed $72,000 in student loan. So it went up and we hadn't even borrowed no more money. Oh my goodness. So how did it, the obvious on how it went up was every single year Christmas came around, right? School clothes came around, all these little things. We, and so what we did all those years is we turned, we would for, do, put them in forbearance. Mm -hmm. But if, mm -hmm. if you're on a graduated, if you on, if you're paying back student loans and you're on a graduated um, schedule where you only paying, let's say you owe $50,000, you're only paying $300 a month, then, you know, only about 5 or $10 is going towards principal. The other $295 is going towards interest, right? But when you put your loans on def on deferral for some reason or forbearance, the interest continues to accrue, although you're not making that payment. So if, if, if you're only paying $295, $295 towards the interest every month, then over the course of four or five or six different months where you forbearanced it, that $295 kept accruing. So you could easily find yourself starting with $50,000 and ending up at $70,000. Because right. we had used all 30 or 36 months of our forbearance and all that money had accrued on the back end. So we ended up owing a whole lot more. And this was probably 2012 or so. We wow. owed about $72,000. And I said, hold up. I don't know if I want to get into the, the whole <laughs> gist of it right now, but I said, there's a problem here, right? Mm -hmm. we, we need to attack this thing or else it's going to keep going up and up and up and up and up. And, you know, I'd be doggone if I didn't pay all these payments and now I owe twenty something thousand dollars more. So, so what's the interest rate? I'm curious to know what what the interest rate is on them. Is it a fixed rate? Is it? It could be. It could. It just depends on mine. Mm -hmm. is, in particular, it was about six and a half percent. Okay. Or something uh -huh. like that. But it just depends on what the loan is. I mean, it could be different depending on who your loan servicer is, and and so all okay. that is kind of individual to the, whatever whoever's managing. Okay. Um, uh, your deal. But on mine, it was a fixed 6.25 or something like that. Uh, whatever it was, it was too much. So oh, period. Right. So uh, we end up owing more. 20, just imagine you didn't, you've been paying on these student loans for 12 years thinking you're doing something, but every now and then doing a forbearance and you owe 20 something thousand more. So more. That is insane. Didn't period. even put a dent in it. No, no, I no, it put more, dent, more dents in it. So I didn't really, I didn't really get to the point where I got to the point where I said, look, we need to go ahead and make some changes on this. This don't make no sense. It's yeah. ridiculous, right? And so that's when around 2013, I said, okay, let's make some changes for about two years. We, I was paying that thing down like a, like a mortgage, like $1,500 a month. And then a few other things happened, but let me just say all that to say that since 2013, we are we haven't paid off our student loans just yet. We still owe about twelve thousand dollars on our student loan, right? But from seventy-two to twelve in the last right. seven, eight, eight, nine years, great. Yeah. But yeah. all that is going to be paid off in September of this year, uh, yeah. October of this year. But in the meantime, what we did and what I want to talk about maybe in a little bit with you guys is what we did for our kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we wanted to say, hey, we made some mistakes. How can we make it better for you right. to teach you so you don't go through the same student loan fiasco that we went through? Mm -hmm. So that was, that's the big piece that I really want to share with you guys, because you have listeners that maybe have children that are 12 or 10 or 15 and they're about to go to college or maybe they're 45 years old and they want to go back to school. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Either way, these are some of the principles I want to share are going to help um, your listeners with the kids or with themselves set themselves up in a better position and not get in this trap. Yeah, I think it's definitely a trap. Um, I was mm -hmm. telling you guys about a documentary that Ant I mentioned Anthony O'Neill mm -hmm. and Dave Ramsey. They did, um, I think they released it, was it earlier this year or late last year, or whatever it was, but um, it's a documentary called Borrowed Future and mm -hmm. how student loans are killing the American dream. Mm -hmm. So it said one of the things I just took a bunch of notes out of it. I mean, it's so rich with information. It's like I didn't even get halfway through the video for without these two pages of notes. Right. Wow. So in 2019, families borrowed more than one hundred and six billion dollars for college. Mm -hmm. And 
basically what we're taught when we're younger is that if you don't go to college, you're not going to succeed or mm -hmm. you're going to fail or you're not going to make as much money. Right. So those type of things. So all these people go to college and get these student loan debts with the hope that yeah. they're going to make more money all right. and that they're, they'll be successful, you know, and only to find that sometimes when they graduate, they can't even find a job yes. in their field. They're not making near what they owe in student loans. That's right. And so there, it's, it's like a rat race, like constantly chasing right. the interest rate and the, the dreams. And it's just like they feel like they're investing in themselves, right? So right. it's got to be worth it, right? It's got to, you know, it's got to mean something. But it's just, it it has just blown my mind how much money people owe in student loans. I know somebody that owes, like I know this person, one hundred and forty thousand mm. dollars in student loan debt. Wow. It's, that's just amazing. And I, I never had to deal with it. My my youngest son didn't go to college. My oldest son went mm -hmm. on a full ride. Okay. So that we didn't have to deal with. So, but when Melanie brought brought it up and I started looking, so I was like, well, let me Google some stuff <laughs> since Google knows everything. And I was looking for places <laughs> where uh, P Americans can go to college. So I Googled and it was like nine countries where American students can go for free or mm. a minimal cost. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So <laughs> it was yummy. The <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are looking to travel nowadays anyway, right? Exactly. So yeah, it, it nine countries. So just Germany, France, uh, Austria, Norway, Iceland, Sweden, Finland. So if wow. people want to Google that and see, I mean, it has different little criteria or whatever to um, look at. You get your bachelor's for little or nothing. Some had master's program. Some you had to um, speak their language. I think one of them was uh, Czech Republic was like, if you want to come and learn how to speak our language, then you can. Right. Mm, yeah. So but the thing about that is that the government, people think that the government it's just going to cover it or nowadays, right? They didn't think this five, 10 years ago, but nowadays there's a lot of talk about the government maybe um, relieving you or paying for your student loans or something like that. And people have to be really careful about that because mm -hmm. that's a lot of political talk right now, but that may be just political posturing, right? Getting ready for the next elections and things that's coming up. Um, yeah. You got to be careful about that type of stuff. And really I teach people, to try their very, very best to go to college debt free. And it's very, very possible if you just apply a little bit of strategy, right? Just, yeah. just a little bit of strategy and you can go to college without taking on large student loans or even student loans at all, just go debt free. So, you know, but don't don't get into the habit of thinking well, the government is gonna, you know, maybe pay for it and things like that. You wanna, you know, for me, I personally don't really, I, I wouldn't mind them paying, but I don't really want to rely on the government to pay for exactly. my student loans. I yeah. want to feel like, you know, I made the student loans. I, I'm, it's, not, and it's not really pride. It's just saying that, you know, I want to cover for what I made. I don't want the government coming in and stepping in and, and helping me necessarily, right? If, I, if I'm capable, <laughs> of, right, here's the deal. if I'm capable of doing it, let me do it, okay? Because and, and then what happens is if I'm, you know, if I hit a hard spot, that's one thing. But if I'm capable, I took the loan out, I'm going to pay the loan back. Uh, that's just how I feel. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are like, no, but that they government, come, listen, the government can't okay. pay. I ain't going to trip too hard if they want to pay. <laughs> right. I ain't going to trip too hard if they want to pay, but they don't have to pay for me. They don't have to pay. I'm just saying, I don't want to make sure like <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel that much right on well, that. You are very different from all the people that I've heard because I know I'm hundreds of them that is like help <laughs> them student loans. Okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. So yeah, our team help them student coming loans. Coming from where I came from. It's a rip -off. Coming from where I came from, battling to be where I'm at again, where I was 20 years ago to where I am now. And I just have that type of mindset mm -hmm. that if I can do it. 
Let me do it. Now, if y'all want to go ahead, I'm not going to trip on it too hard, but I think we got to be careful um, allowing the government to do everything for us because what ends up happening is we become reliant on the government. And I'm, I don't want to be all political, but I'm just saying we got to be careful about that. It's okay if we need help or if they can help us a little bit, that's cool. But we just got to caution ourselves and being too much, too available to say, oh, bail me out, help me out. Now, I understand it's cool if they want to, but I'm just a little caution. I have a little caution about that. Call me weird. They, call bail, me they bail out the uh, automotive. <laughs> they yeah, bail right, out the right, banks. Right. They bail out everybody else. That's right. And, you know, you're right. Like, you're right. I, I can't argue with that. that. That's true. <laughs> That's but true. I I would I would be concerned about the people who are just waiting on right. the government to bail them out, opposed to like just like COVID, right? Yeah. They stopped the interest rates and stuff, and instead of people taking advantage of that time to pay those loans right. back without the interest growing, right? Everybody stopped, right? Yep. Just, right. Just, just stop paying instead of uh, aggressively paying as much as they could as long while the interest rate was stopped excellent that's a good point yeah. that that just i'm like no now's the time to be paying it right because what if stop. we come back and say we're not paying we're not going to bail you out of yep. anything they, now they were, yep you got to restart and then rethink and recalibrate and redo and next thing you know when you what you said is exactly right any. when that interest mm -hmm. wasn't accruing start doing what you can to chunk that money off real quick just in case mm -hmm. they come back and fool you Yes, um, that part, that part. Good so point. another thing I want to touch on, um, or just a story that was in this article or that, that documentary, they were talking about people being broke. So there was one girl on there who said in 13 years, she's paid $7,221 on her loan Mm. And the interest that has accrued is $19,030 and 27 cents. Absolutely. So there is like at that rate, there is no way she would ever pay that loan off yep. or those loans or whatever, however many it was. I'm like, that's crazy. They also said there's like 45 million, 45 million people with $1.6 trillion in student loans. That's crazy. crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. So, uh, yeah, that uh, that's unfortunate. But, you know, some, something's got to give. Something's got to happen. Something moving, has to happen. Moving forward. So it's like, what do we, like, where do we go from here with the student loans? Um, because, mm -hmm. you know, college is still college. It's yeah. not like they're going to lower tuition, okay? So, you know, how do we get people to realize that there's some alternatives and there's some other things they can do um, to afford college? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so what are some other things that we can go, what, what are some other ways we can go about approaching the whole college tuition thing? So. Yeah. That that's important. If you want, I can give you a few things that we can think yeah, about. Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna do put out this one thing, and then I do want you to go ahead and give some tips. But there's sure. um uh Christina Ellis, mm -hmm. she's um she wrote a book, Confessions of a Scholarship Winner. Mm -hmm. So she applied for scholarships like crazy, and mm -hmm. you know went to school on scholarships. And I think the thing is, people are too lazy to do the work. Maybe. Yeah, some are. It, it mean, it's scholarships out there for if you're too short, you're too tall, <laughs> if you are a golf caddy. Like, seriously, these are yeah. ways that you, scholarships that you can get. And one of the things that she said was that if you can spend two hours applying for a scholarship and you get $1,000, that's like making $500 an hour. Yes. Right? Just yeah. by doing that work. Where can you go and make $500 an mm -hmm. hour? Yeah. By just researching scholarships. <laughs> no, she's 100% right. I mean, I have a story about that, too, about a person um, here locally that did something very, very similar to that. And I'll share that at the, uh, towards the end here. But that's that's an excellent point. But that, that actually takes me to one of my tips I want to kind of give to your listeners. Um, well, the first thing is this. The first thing is this. If, you, if you're going to go to college or if you have a child that's going to go to college, um, you need to 
first commit to trying to do it debt free. OK, I say try, commit and try. Those are two different things, but just commit to doing it and saying, look, this is how we're going to do it. We're not going to take out no student loans. When this happened, when when when, it, when my kids went to get student loans or go to college, the first thing they threw in their face was the FAFSA. You know, that little the mm -hmm. FAF, whatever it is, FAFSA. Boom. I said, no, we don't we don't need a FAFSA because we're not getting no loans. So <laughs> my kids was like, what, what you talking about? So, so mm -hmm. but the first thing you got to do is you have to be committed to say, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to borrow no money for it. I'm going to be creative. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you're not committed, then the first time ten thousand dollars worth of loans come up, you're going to take it. Right. Or you might you're going to think hard about it. It's going. ah. And so you got to make a commitment to say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to get no loan, period, point blank no matter what. Now, that takes me to number two. The second thing that you need to think about doing is if you're going to have a commitment not to get student loans and you got to have a commitment to plan ahead. So you got to say, OK, yeah, you in the sixth grade, right? You in the eighth grade. We don't want to get loans for you to go to college. And I want you to go to college or you want to go to college, whatever. But we got to start planning for this now. Right. Mm -hmm. We can't really wait till you're a senior in college. So how do we start planning to say we're not going to pay you know, we don't have money to pay, you know, $10,000 a semester or $10,000 a year or whatever. So the plan that you have to have um, needs to say, first of all, you got to tell your kid if it's your child and say, listen, I know there's other parent kids you go to school with and they got money for college, but we don't necessarily have no money for college. So here's <laughs> how we're going to plan this thing out. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to make sure you get good grades and you got to. You got if you don't play a sport, you need to find a sport. They might be giving out chess scholarships. They might be right. giving out backgammon scholarships, whatever. Yeah, musicians yeah. find you a niche when you get to high school. And, and, and if it's Spanish, they might be giving out Spanish, whatever it may be. It don't have to be sports. Right. Right. But we got to start planning ahead and we have to prepare our children for what they have to do because they have to take a little bit of ownership. Mm -hmm. if We didn't save money. Right. So one of the things my daughter did that I didn't talk about earlier was, you know, one of my daughters, my son went off and did his own thing. Right. He ended up going back to college, but he went back to college on his own dime when he was an adult. But my daughter, she knew by the, from the time she was eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade, we, didn't, we, didn't, we ain't saving a lot of money for college. She got good grades. That was her thing. I said, OK, you're going to have to get some good grades or you're going to get a scholarship. or so something like this, play some sports, whatever it took. So she ended up getting a lot of really high grades. She ended up taking an ACT test three or four different times to make sure she could qualify so for some extra scholarships. So she got scholarships. So, again, your kid, when your kid is a sophomore freshman, if they have designs on going, going to college for anything, I don't care if it's a welding certificate right whatever it may be they mm -hmm. have to take ownership and say which what can i do what can you do you have to maybe you have to do some things preparing yourself as you lead up to college so let them know that it's important college is important you want them to go whatever but what type of responsibility do are they going to have to take to help pay for their upcoming schooling so um, my daughter had two choices you know scholarships or work or go to a local whatever. So the third thing, the third thing that I want to kind of wrap about is I wanted my daughter to focus on the cheapest route to get the degree. She didn't really want to do the cheapest route to get the degree, but one of the cheapest routes is community college, right? Yeah. I mean, we can't have a conversation about student loans without talking about community. I went to community college, got my first uh, 60 something credit hours, and I've never had an employer that asked me, hey, where'd you go and get those first, uh, first right. more year? That's going to make a difference on whether or not I hire you, right? They don't care. So if they don't care, let me go ahead and spend that 2,500 for two years, as opposed to that 25,000 for two years. That's just logical. Yes. And that's <laughs> going to like, a state is that going to a state school because i know it's just going to community college mm -hmm. no i mean the twenty five thousand. yeah twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. whether where there's what i just made that analogy up but if it's yeah well it was um that was the call for some of the schools they talked about but it was like duke or some of the other ones are uh ny ny new york new york nyu okay yeah nyu seventy five thousand dollars a year That's a year crazy. That don't make no sense. And listen, that don't make no sense, right? It don't. A year. 
So no, that don't make no sense. When that person, whoever go to NYU, could have went to New York City Community College and paid about seventy five hundred dollars a year, right, or whatever it may be. So that's my point. We need to we need to we need to curve our kids. Mind, yes. right? And say, yes. look, you know, I love you and everything, but you ain't got to go to Stanford. You ain't got yes. to go to the University of Texas. And I don't, and I live in Missouri or whatever, wherever you may live. So we got to make sure, but they, they have to understand that early, right? Or else they're going to be in for a big surprise and disappointed mm -hmm. and everybody around all their kids at the suburbs, they going here and there and your kid going to community college. Listen, that's one thing I impressed upon my kids early is that there ain't nothing wrong with the first getting the first two out to two, two years of college at a community college where mm -hmm. you're going to be more mature by the time you go to college because here's what happened right you go to college at 18 down at that big old fifty thousand dollar a year school and you ain't even ready you down there wasting people's money and so so you ain't even ready at 18. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So don't send me that i don't i'm not gonna send you down there to waste my money yeah. So you got to have that type of frank conversation with your kid when they're a sophomore, when they're a junior, leading up to being a senior. And so I said my daughter could go to community college and she could pay that cheap tuition or she could go to another school and get a bunch of scholarships and things to help pay. So she my one daughter, oldest daughter, decided, hey, I'm going to go ahead and work hard because I want to go to a school that's not a community college. So uh, that's what she ended up doing. She ended up working a bunch, getting a bunch of scholarships, and she ended up going down to uh, a university. And so she didn't go to a community college. But don't take that off the table, okay? If you're a grown person, you're 40 years old, and you want to go and get your bachelor's degree and none of your credit hours match, you don't have to start off with the University of Missouri. You don't have to start off with the University of, of, of Nebraska, wherever you may be. You can start off with... Uh, so-and-so county community college to get the cheap 60 some odd credit hours before you go on to the bigger school and pay the big money that mm -hmm. that's a really big key okay don't look down on community colleges ain't nothing wrong with them uh mm -hmm. in a lot of ways they're they're good especially for 18 19 year old kid because they allow them to get college credit but still maybe be at home save money mm -hmm. so these are all the types of creative thinking that you've got to do if you want to go to school Debt free. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, go ahead. Too. I was going to say, and to speak to even younger um, mothers or younger families, if you have a newborn baby and you mm -hmm. want to open up an account and you start investing now, that's right. If you just take fifty dollars a month now mm -hmm. and put it away, invest it in something. It's you know, if you are iPhone user, right? Invest in Apple. That's excellent. That's excellent. You know, idea. just yeah. invest. And by the time they're 18, you know, and you're steady putting this money away every wow. month, bam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a five, uh, you can open up a 529 account or something like that. And a 529 is just where you would put your money. And that's an excellent point. You can just start investing. If you got a little, a young family, you know, you got yes. a five year old, you know, you got an eight year old, you know, you got a nine year old, a three year old. Some type baby. of custodial account. Open yes. it up yeah. and invest for your child. Perfect. Perfect idea. So, yeah, earlier I was talking about that person ain't got nothing. <laughs> but if you if you can plan properly like that, that's a part of that that planning process. And really, a lot of people that don't have nothing, if you really think about it, they got $50. True. <laughs> that's right. They got something. So, but, yeah. The, the other thing I want to talk about to help uh, your listeners was another idea is just simply to go a little bit slower. OK, in other words, you don't have to take all you don't have to take 15 hours a semester. Maybe you have to take nine hours a semester. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe. And, and here's my thing. You know, whether you get your college degree at 22 or 26. Right. It's better to be 26 years old with no debt and a college degree than be 22 year old with eighty thousand dollars in student loans. That's my opinion, because I know that I know that, that little three or four years in the big scheme of things, I'm old enough to know that little three or four years ain't going to kill you. That right? part. Yes. So, so, so if you got to go a little Facts. bit slower, yeah, there you go. If you got to go a little bit slower to yes. pay with cash or, or to come out, come up with more money because you work in it, you work in a part time job. When I first went to college, let me share this. When I first went to college, I went to a community college for two years. And then when I was 22 years old. I went down to Kansas State University and I, I worked at Wendy's as a cook 
I didn't have a car. I walked to work. I worked there 20, 20 hours a week, 25 hours a week. But that's when I that, that was my experience having to work a little. That's why that's why when I got, got out of college, it was only twenty five thousand as opposed to fifty thousand yeah. because I worked a little bit during that time. So it wouldn't be so much. But, you know, that's the other thing. Besides going slow. Hey, you got to do a little work. Maybe you got to work an extra job on the side. Right. Yeah. Maybe you got to uh, put in my daughter just to share experience. My daughter, when she went off to college, she not only had scholarships, but by the time she was a sophomore, she had three jobs that she was working. She was the part time person at the front desk of the Honors College a few hours a week. She came back here, drove back to the city she lived in, and she was a, a part time CNA working week, one week in a month as a CNA. And then she also became she also became as a sophomore, a dorm leader. I forgot what you call them, but a, a resident assistant or something. Uh -huh. So she became a resident assistant. So she had those three jobs from sophomore year through the time she graduated that also helped pay for college. Yeah. So if, you, if you're a 45 year old person, 35 year old person, you wanna go back to school, maybe you have to, to do it debt free, maybe you have to take on a second job. Maybe you gotta take on some overtime. But like you said earlier, some people are just not willing to put in the extra work, the yeah. extra time, the extra money, the extra thinking, the extra creativity, they yeah. not, not, they're not willing to put in that type of work to actually do what they got to do. And that's what it is, work. Yeah. And getting a loan is not the answer. It's not. Apparently. Don't have to be the answer. That's not the answer. <laughs> no, it don't have to be. There are you scholarships know? for single parents. I mean, yes. it's, it's, just, it's all kind of um, scholarships. Urban Financial Services Coalition for people who want to get a career in the financial institution. We They have a golf tournament every year to raise funds have about ten thousand dollars to give away do you know they struggle finding people to apply mm -hmm. for that loan that's, they that's have crazy. a hard time giving away that money that's crazy because you crazy. know crazy that don't okay so that was that's another one of my one of my one of my um tips is just simply the scholarships and the grants and the things that are out there for you um just to share the quick story about the lady locally that went to my church she had three kids um and she did, she was a single mom, had three kids that were about, th these kids are older now, this is about 15 years ago, but she had three kids, two daughters, twins, and one son, and the son got a football scholarship to pay for some of his schooling, but she had to pay for the rest, but the daughters had none. And she tells me the story, she's always talked to me about the story, about how she made it a really a part-time job looking for scholarships. And one of the things that she did was, she took all the products that she bought for her kids around the home. And when I say all the products, I mean from your cereal boxes to your Lunchables, whatever it is. And they would always be advertising, you know, these giveaways and these scholarship opportunities and so forth. And she wrote to all these companies and she was able to secure enough money from these companies just by simply writing. And she said she made it a part time job to find money for her kids to go to college. And she was able to write all these companies and all, and she probably wrote, she said hundreds and hundreds of companies that she wrote and asked them, hey, this is my situation. I'm a single mom, I have two, I have three kids and this is what, blah, blah, blah. And they end up providing and helping her because her kids made good grades. Mm -hmm. She ended up getting scholarships from those companies to help her send her kids to college. And all three of the kids graduated from college. The young man played football. The other daughter went to Lindenwood in St. Louis. And I forgot where the other one went to. But the point is, like you said, got to make it a part time job okay. Go ahead and do it and get out there and start writing. Now, nowadays, you ain't going to write. You'll be emailing or whatever you're doing. But it has to be a focal point. You got to be intentional about it. And it can be done. Intentional. Intentionality. That's right. That's a I'm, good story. That's <laughs> no, a good story. I could go on and on about this for real. Yeah. Like, it's just so many good parts to this good and bad but it's just it's so much information on it yeah. and i just want to highlight like uh, one person in that story um the documentary there was an, a guy who was an orthodontist he had gotten a tooth injury mm. with a golf ball and so he had to get his teeth fixed anyway that encouraged him to be an orthodontist uh. right so he graduated he got out of undergrad debt free mm -hmm. okay he's one he's now 
or at that time was one of the 101 people who have 1 million or more in student loans. Ooh. One million dollars in student loans? One million dollars. He said he, he wow. dental school cost him, when he came out of dental school, it was $400,000. He had $400,000 in student loans, mind you. Undergrad, debt free. Wow. Grad school, four hundred thousand, and but ortho and oral surgency or uh, surgery resi residency cost him ninety five k a year. Man, and so at that point, he it, first of all it was like only fifteen hundred people would even be selected for the program. So he was just blessed. Uh, so he felt to just be one of them to get accepted because that's what he wanted to do. Right. And so he was like, you just, at that point, you don't even think about it. It's just like, just throw it on with the rest of them. I already got 500000 What's what's He'll another? never get out of debt. Yeah, so exactly. his wife is on there too. So she's running the office for him. Uh -huh. um, she's she's like, it's scary. Like, how do you ever get, I mean, he he, he almost about to cry on this, this show. <laughs> well, like, literally. He, but he's probably hoping yeah. the fact that he's going to make the money to pay it off easy as a dentist, right? But unfortunately, okay. as we all know, that ain't always. Every dentist don't make five hundred thousand dollars a year. Every no. chiropractor don't make a, you know three hundred thousand dollars a year. But the problem comes in with not just the dentist, but it's the major person that majored in social work that got two hundred thousand dollars a year, or two hundred thousand dollars with loans. You know what I'm saying? The person yeah. that they, they they job is not going to pay them. Never pay them enough. <laughs> enough to actually take care of the type the of care that. I had to stop. Like <laughs> right. it costs how much? Now, now, how much do they make a year? <laughs> and then his wife said what? it's accruing, y'all, $6,000 a month in interest. 6000 a month. Are they working? Yeah, they're running the orthodontist office. I wonder if they're paying that off. I don't know. At the end of the show, he they did say he was down to like 600 something thousand from a million plus. Okay. So he working on it. We might I had to leave the country. I had to leave the country. What city was he in? So what city was he in? He said, "What city was he in?" Uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, I got to keep an eye on the Jacksonville, Florida newspapers to see if anybody's jumping <laughs> off. <laughs> but uh, Jacksonville, Florida. You got that's a any? lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. It's that's it's crazy. it's an awesome documentary. I think. I mean, it's. I think it's on. Um, it might be on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, if you guys go check it out, it is really oh, name of it really, again. Borrowed, borrowed future is borrowed future. Okay, and it is a really, really good documentary. Like it's it's insane. Yeah, like I've watched it like three th three or four times. Really, just I can't believe it. it but is, it's a good one. It's a good one for parents and uh, people yes. looking to go to school or send kids to school. Yeah. Yes, all the people that are have kids going to school, or if you want to go back to school watch this documentary because it might change your mind about student loans and yeah. how you decide to pay for yes yeah. i think the, appro the, appro the approach to student loans it needs to be one where in my opinion it's like we're not no debt like i like my, I, yeah. I didn't talk about my other daughter my other daughter she went to college she went to a community college on a volleyball mm -hmm. scholarship so she played volleyball and she did that but then when she got to be a uh, got done with volleyball at the community college she didn't keep playing but she's in a program um at a local university where they pay for her school she wants to be a teacher so they're paying for her schooling but she has to commit some years to teach in that school district once she gets her degree so those things are available to you as well depending on what your degree is but the, the one thing i want to say about a degree is this it's very important that you teach your kids to get a degree that is a usable degree not just a degree, just to say I have a degree. You want a degree that you can come out and actually make some money in the degree. Don't get don't get a degree in something that is not, you know, you can't use and you know, get some specialize in something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so with my children, all my, my two kids are teachers. Uh, my son is a teacher, he's an elementary teacher, and my daughter's gonna be a teacher. My other daughter's a nurse, the one that I was talking about earlier. So I wanted them to have things that they can actually use and make money using. Not mm -hmm. some old vague degree that you don't just quite know what you're going to do because you might make $20,000 a year, might make thirty. 
Right. You're going to have somebody make some money. Yet. If it's not a specialty, you know. Yep. yep. And I think another thing that's valuable now is um, there's so many certifications. Yep. That, don't, like don't I have a business it. continuity um, yeah. certification and that's transferable across different types of organizations. That's right. And I mean, the salary range is a, it's a good salary range. And then there's like um, ACH and just different areas where there are like certifications. I, I think people look at even more mm-hmm. than the some of those college degrees even. Right, right. Well, you don't even need a college degree depending exactly. on what you do. So that's yeah. a good point. That's a good point too. And so- yeah we do have to kind of change our narrative that it's been for the last 50, 60, 100 years, right? That says everybody has to go to college. Not necessarily. You can make a lot of money doing other things that you can just get a certificate for. You can get some type of like say certification or um, something to, it could be in the technology space. Everything Mm -hmm. don't require a two year degree or a four year degree like it used to. Yeah. And all that in mind as well, but that, but that again, there's always some schooling that's required. All right. Yeah, if you want right. to be a plumber, if you want to be a welder, if you you still got to go to school, so some of these things still yeah. apply as well. So even technology, you know, yeah. you don't have to go get a four year degree. There are tech technical schools, you know, to be a programmer or other yeah. things. There are other ways to achieve that goal than one hundred eighty thousand of yeah. student loan debt than so, a four year college. Four year yeah. college. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good. But see again. The planning and everything you do up front with your child when your child is a sophomore or a junior in high school, you know, having that communication. What do you want to do? What do you want to specialize in? And I kind of tricked my kids. I won't say tricked them, but I kind of um, I kind of identified things that I thought they would be good at early in their life. And I began to talk them. You coach them through all the <laughs> plant no seeds, you know. That's right. So, so, so that's a little, that's a little, that's a little, uh, uh, you know, parent trick, right? You didn't start, yeah. oh, okay. oh, you good with animals? Oh, you boy, you be a great veterinarian, you know. So you, know, you start planting them seeds early, yeah. and so th- because when you plant them seeds, it sticks in their mind. Oh, yeah. I'm good at this. Oh, I can. Oh, I'm a good communicator. Whatever it may be. So that's a little trick that you got to do, but that's all about planning early. Yeah, good, good stuff. Yes. Well, we appreciate you coming. Appreciate those tips. Um, where can the listeners catch you, follow you, subscribe to you? I'm on every social media except TikTok. All right, I'm not on there, but if they just look at Smart Money Bro, B R O anywhere, uh, whether it's I, Instagram. Facebook. We do have a private Facebook Facebook page that is growing. Um, YouTube. I just started a YouTube channel um, uh, some months back. Um, if they want to go and check out the YouTube, become a subscriber, check out some of those videos. That's great. They can always reach me at um, go on my website at smartmoneybro.com and uh, they can always contact me and reach me there. But I do one on ones with people, helping them with their personal financial situation, um, helping them with their real estate. Whatever it may be, helping people grow their money the way I've been able to grow my money um, and do it in a practical way. Right. No guru stuff. I'm not I'm not going to teach you how to do Forex and all that type of stuff. I'm going to teach. Not that that's bad. I'm just saying that that's not really my thing. And I can only teach what I what I've learned to do and what I've done. And so it's a very practical, basic general ways that you could change the way you think and then change the way you behave with money. And so that's what I do with people in one-on-one sessions. I do free 15 minute phone conversations with anybody. You can call me up and let's have a conversation about your personal situation. So, but anywhere on any social media platforms, YouTube is a great place to watch a few of my videos. So. Love it. Sounds good. I appreciate you guys having, let me say thank you all very, very much. I really appreciate it. I'm enjoying what you guys are doing too. I understand you guys are reaching out and helping people as well. And uh, a lot of times for us in our community, that's what it takes. Because sometimes with in our community, we don't get the best. We may go to somebody that don't look like us for information about money. And they don't give us what they give their other clients that don't look like us. You get what I'm saying? If you ever mm-hmm. try, if you've been in this space for a while, you, you understand what I'm saying, that we don't get their best. And so sometimes it's good when people like us that look like us want to give our best to our people um, so that we can feel comfortable getting that information somehow. People have to understand there's levels to this thing. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And and sometimes they 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 they, they give it to us on that first level. I'm ready for level four that you gave that cup that, that you gave that, that that other couple that live in the other part of the city. I'm ready for that level. That's mm-hmm. why. You're approaching me with level one, level two. Hold up. You ain't got to, you know, treat me. <laughs> <up. Hold up. laughs> yeah. I'm just telling you what happened, right? I'm being frank with you about what happens to us when we go and seek the best of this type yeah. of information. So it's good when people that look like us are able to bring this information to us and feel comfortable with it. Amen. Yes. And the tambourine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <thank you. laughs> so once again, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you all for having me. Peace. All right. <laughs> Peace. You guys gonna hang me up? Peace. Y'all. <laughs> right. yeah, we're gonna end the broadcast. Yes. Right. You guys take care. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Girls Talk Money with Money T and Simply C. Catch us every Monday right here on YouTube at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. You can also email us at letstalkmoney1969 at gmail.com. And remember, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your money mindset matters.